It's widely accepted that the Oregon Ducks can contend for the Big Ten Championship in year number one as members of this conference because of that explosive offense. But what about the other side of the ball? What about defense? Do the Quack Attack have a championship level defensive unit? From LA to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. Absolutely nobody is disputing the fact that the Oregon Ducks have a Big Ten and National Championship level offense. Will Stein has that machine flat out humming right now. You lose Bo Nix, a Heisman finalist. You replace him in the transfer portal via a guy who might end up in New York City for the second straight year for an Oregon Ducks quarterback, and that's Dylan Gabriel, right? They've got that side of the ball figured out. That box is certainly checked. You look over to the defensive side of the football, and that's the unit that I believe needs to make that next jump, that next step forward, that next development for Oregon as a program itself to also take that next jump, to also take that next step, to be a Power 2 conference champion, and to possibly be a national champion as well. You look back, and I know Oregon fans are going to love being compared to Washington, you look back at last year's Washington Huskies. What they were able to do, 14-0, and getting to the national championship game. They had an explosive offense, one of the best offenses in college football, a generational wide receiver room with Roma Dunze, Jalen McMillan, and Jalen Polk. And they had a decent defense. But when you got to the national championship game against a team that was laden with NFL football players, you saw what happened. In the age of offense... Defense, believe it or not, defense is still needed to be able to get to that level. Look at what Michigan did. Look at what the years before that and what the Georgia Bulldogs were able to do and how mean and nasty they were on the defensive side of the football. Oregon's head coach, Dan Lanning, knows all about that. He was the coordinator of one of the best defenses in recent history in college football, that 2021 Georgia Dogs team, Michigan fans, know all about that defense. So Dan Lanning, maybe better than anybody, knows what Oregon has to do to jump up to that next level in his third season as head coach of the Oregon Ducks. Does Oregon have a championship-level defense for 2024? That means something different to a lot of different people. Okay, Oregon doesn't need a number one, a number two, a number three defense. They don't need a dominant top of the country defense like the Michigan Wolverines. Another example is the Iowa Hawkeyes, right? They won division championships two of the last three years. The final two of the last three Big Ten West Division Championships to get to Indianapolis in the Big Ten Championship game. Their defense needed to play on such an elite and high level because their offense was terrible, because the Iowa offense was absolutely putrid. They needed to put that team on their shoulders and on their back just to get there. Like, look at last season. They were a deflected pass, a shedding of a block. They were so close in those two games against Washington, and they had a defense that was, say, around 20th to 25th in the country. Oregon is going to be an offensive football team, maybe from now until the time the sun explodes. That's just kind of the Oregon identity of what they are, and it's been like that even dating back to the Chip Kelly years as well. But they still need to be pretty good on defense. They just don't need to be that level of elite. They need to be about a top 10 to maybe top 15 national type of defense. They need to be in the top 10 in a good amount of defensive categories to be able to capture what they want. Like That was like where Florida State was last year. That's where Georgia was last season. And they were Alabama. And right, they were right on the cusp. And they were right in a situation. And Oregon had better offenses 
maybe significantly, than all three of those football teams as well. You put the whole picture together, and that's the championship puzzle that needs to be solved for Dan Lanning. Now the question is, does Oregon have the horses to get there? This is where things get fun. I'm not sure if I see a superstar type of defensive player, but I see a lot of really good pieces that together are going to make a really good unit. And you have very experienced players coming back on all three levels of the defense, like Jordan Birch on the defensive line for the Ducks, an all Pac-12 type of performer. He led the team in tackles for loss last year in seven and a half. And then you move into the linebacking core a little bit. Jeffrey Bassa, 72 tackles. He was second on the team last year. Second team all Pac-12. He really shows the nose for the football as well. And he's been in this program for a lot of years. Very experienced type of football player. Big Ten fans might know this name at linebacker, Justin Jacobs. A lot of people saying around the Oregon program, this is the first time since 2022 that Justin has been fully healthy. And a big key for Oregon, and I think maybe their success, especially in this middle part of this defense, is if Justin can get healthy and stay healthy as much as he can. Secondary is the most intriguing part of this defense as well. You lose three big pieces back there from a unit that probably needed to improve anyway. So you lose Kyrie Jackson, First team all Pac-12 type of player, led the team in picks with three, and you replace him with another guy that was towards the top of the Pac-12 in their defensive backs category as well from your arch rival Washington, bringing in Jabbar Muhammad. Jabbar is kind of that lockdown guy. He's going to be the guy that is going to match up against the top receiver on some of these Big Ten teams every single week. And Oregon's success might depend on what Jabbar can do in man-on-man coverage against these guys to maybe open up other parts of their defense as well. Evan Williams was a huge part to the Ducks last season at the safety spot. Second team all Pac-12. He led the team in tackles with 82, and he was second on the team in sacks. With four and a half. Watching some of the tape on Evan, I love how they schemed him up coming up off the edge, coming up even in the middle in the gut of the defense from 10 yards out. Looks like he shot out of a cannon and he finds a way to make plays, get sacks, tackles for loss, that kind of thing in the backfield as well. Now, you take that, and that's a very valuable piece to your defense, and you replace him with maybe not a complete copy and paste type of guy. But someone who's at least in the ballpark in Kobe Savage that's played significant power five snaps at Kansas State. Kobe Savage, you watch him on film and you see a lot of the same type of tendencies as Evan and his ability to quickly get to the line of scrimmage. And once he gets there in run support, being able to make sure tackles every single time. And he had three interceptions each of the last two seasons as well. So he's a multifaceted, talented defensive back at a position that Oregon needed help with at safety. You also bring in Cam Alexander, who is a highly graded corner coming over from UTSA. And then Tysheem Johnson as well comes back. I really like what Oregon has in the secondary. Are they a secondary like, say, Ohio State with talented players like Denzel Burke and Caleb Downs? I'm not sure if they're at that type of level. But this is an Oregon secondary that I believe could be in that discussion, in that top discussion, as maybe some of the top secondaries in the Big Ten Conference this season. And their ability to defend against the pass, I think, is going to have a ripple effect into the rest of this defense. There is a really key part for Oregon if they want to take that next step up, and it, it it obviously pertains to this year's team, but it almost pertains to even the future of Oregon football. If they want to maintain their status as a national championship contender, it's all about the development of these last two recruiting classes, the first two recruiting classes of the Dan Lanning era. They have both been top 10 classes. Lanning brought in a combined 13 defensive blue chip players in his first two classes. And if those guys can develop 
into really good players. And all seven of those guys in the first year, they did not transfer out, not yet, of the program as well. But if they can develop this season, and if some of those guys in the redshirt freshman season or their sophomore season can take really big steps up, this Oregon defense is also going to take really big steps up as well. Mateo Uwiyungalele is one of those guys. Amari Washington is expected to step up and be a starter on this defensive line as well. And then you look at this freshman class. How about 366 pounds of Jericho Johnson? That's a true freshman that you got to watch out for. Can this be a defense that can get to that top 10 top 15 type of level nationally. They got a lot of competition in the Big Ten Conference. I've already mentioned some of the names as well that they're going to be competing against. And there's going to be some teams in the Big Ten that are obviously going to step up on the defensive side of the football as well. This is a team that could realistically finish fifth, maybe sixth in the Big Ten and could still be a top 15 nationally ranked defense when all is said and done. I truly believe that. I truly believe that that could happen. When I look at this defense as a whole, and I try to look back at last year, I believe that this can be an improved defense. If that talent from within can develop, and we see that develop throughout spring and throughout fall, and that's why these months are so big with some of those young guys stepping into some of these roles right now. If they can do that, This is an Oregon team that can certainly accomplish their goals on the defensive side of the football in 2024. I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think Oregon can be a championship-level defense? Can this be a defense that can carry the Ducks to a national championship in 2024? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.